Boris Johnson watched on gloomily from the far end of the front bench as the Prime Minister made her first major intervention since the coughing disaster which marred her conference address last week. She said the ball is in the EU's court on breaking the deadlock over the so-called divorce bill and claimed her Florence speech has moved the negotiations forward. But she said the implementation period outlined in Tuscany could be extended, saying, how long the period is should be determined simply by how long it will take to prepare and implement the new systems we need. As of today, these considerations point to an implementation period of around two years. One of Mr. Johnson's infamous red lines was that a transition period should not last a second more than two years. In her address to the House of Commons she also released two papers unveiling proposals for a new trade and customs policy once we exit the bloc, as the fifth round of discussions get underway in Brussels today. The PM said they paved the way for legislation to allow the UK to operate as an independent trading nation. She told the House of Commons they will create an innovative customs system that will help us achieve the greatest possible tariff and barrier-free trade as we leave the EU. And in a noticeable hardening of her language, if the talks were to collapse without a deal she added, and while I believe it is profoundly in all our interests for the negotiations to succeed, it is also our responsibility as a government to prepare for every eventuality. She added, so that is exactly what we are doing. These white papers also support that work, including setting out steps to minimize disruption for businesses and travelers. In an upbeat assessment of the recent Brexit progress she told MPs, the purpose of the Florence speech was to move the negotiations forward, and that is exactly what has happened. As Michelle Barnier said after the last round, there is a new dynamic in the negotiations. And she said in the bilateral discussions she has had with Angela Merkel, Donald Tusk and other leaders they welcomed the tone set in Florence and the impact this was having on moving the negotiations forwards. But at his daily press briefing in Brussels, the European Commission's chief spokesman, Margaritis Sheenas, insisted the next move had to come from the UK. He said, there is a clear sequencing to these talks. There has been so far no solution found on step one, which is the divorce proceedings, so the ball is entirely in the UK court for the rest to happen. His comments follow the latest assessment of Mr. Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, who says there still has not been sufficient progress on the issues of citizens' rights and the border with Ireland as well as the UK's so-called divorce bill for the talks to move forward. And European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker has warned it would take miracles for them to be able to go on to the next phase later this month. At an EU leaders' summit on October 19, 20 a final decision will be taken, which would put back trade talks effectively until the new year. But Mrs May insisted she remains optimistic 
and paid tribute to the work of Brexit Secretary David Davis, who she said had made real and tangible progress on a number of vital areas, including reciprocal health care and pension arrangements for EU citizens in the UK and Britons living on the continent. She said, while of course progress will not always be smooth, by approaching these negotiations in a constructive way, in a spirit of friendship and cooperation, and with our sights firmly set on the future, I believe we can prove the doomsayers wrong. I am determined to deliver what the British people voted for and to get it right. That is my duty as Prime Minister, it is our duty as a government, and it is what we will do.